planning to support English language learners, SALT, and the new ELD standards. By the end of this part of lecture, you will be able to demonstrate an understanding of the 2012 revised uh, California ELD standards and the previous SALT levels and their implications for English language learners in your classrooms. So let me start first with the old SALT levels. You may still see these old SALT levels. They were in place until just 2015 um, as we're transitioning over to the new ELD framework. So these may be the levels that you see on um, with some of your students. So the first level is the beginning level. So students at this level of English proficiency may demonstrate little to no receptive or productive English skills. So they may not seem like they understand what's going on. They're beginning to understand a few concrete details during unmodified instruction, but they need a lot of context. They may be able to respond to some communication and learning demands, but with many errors. Oral and written production is usually extremely limited. Um, and it consists of disconnected words and memorized statements and questions. Uh, frequent errors make communication difficult. Luckily, most students do not stay at the beginning stage for very long. They move very quickly into the early intermediate stage. Students performing at the early intermediate stage, um, they're continuing to develop receptive and productive language. They can usually identify and understand more concrete details during unmodified instruction, but still need lots of context. Um, they may be able to respond with increasing ease to more varied communication and learning demands with fewer errors. Um, usually, oral and written production is still limited to phrases and memorized statements and class questions, and there are still frequent errors that may reduce communications that may interfere with meaning. So if you think about beginners at producing at the word level, early intermediate students may be able to produce at the phrase level. Students next move into the intermediate level um, of English language development, and students at this level uh, can begin to tailor their English language skills to meet communication and learning demands with increasing accuracy. They're able to identify and understand more concrete details and some major abstract concepts during unmodified instruction. They're able to respond with increasing ease to more varied communication and learning demands with fewer errors. There may still be some errors that complicate communication, but they're much easier to understand. At this point, oral and written production has usually expanded to sentences, some short paragraphs, and some original statements and questions, so not just memorized stuff. So this is where you see kind of a, a jump between the beginning, early, intermediate, and the intermediate stages. The next stage is early advanced, and this is also a little bit of a jump. Um, students at this level of English language proficiency begin to combine the elements of the English language in complex, cognitively demanding situations and can use English um, as a means for communicating in the or communicating and learning in the content areas. They can identify and summarize most concrete details and abstract, abstract concepts during unmodified instruction in most content areas, although some content areas, uh, especially the humanity and for some science that's not uh, inquiry based, like where there are heavy text demands, may be more difficult. Oral and written production is characterized by more elaborated discourse, so multi-paragraph essays, writing, fully developed paragraphs and compositions. Errors are less frequent and they rarely complicate communication where they're there. So it may be um, some fossilized errors. You're understanding everything that the English language learner is saying, but it's just not perfect native uh, speech. Okay, and then the final level of uh, English language development is the advanced stage and often uh, advanced English language learners, uh, you don't even know that they're actually English. So students performing at this level of English language proficiency communicate effectively with various audiences on a wide range of both familiar and new topics to meet social and learning demands. For students at this level to attain uh, the level of their English speaking peers, they just need further linguistic enhancement and refinement, so very specialized feedback. But they can identify and summarize concrete details in abstract context during unmodified instruction in all content area. They use appropriate discourse for the content areas, and they make very um, rare errors that don't interfere with communication. So those are the old SALT levels um, and kind of how 
you can understand them. And I'm going to put the proficiency level descriptors that I was using to um, talk about the levels up on Beachboard for your. Since 2012, um, with full implementation in 2015, California has been under a new set of ELD standards with new proficiency levels. So the new proficiency levels are uh, emerging, expanding, and bridging. So let me go back to emerging. So as I talked about in last lecture, um, the BICS basic interpersonal communication skills occurs during uh, the emerging level. The emerging is uh, the beginning and intermediate, early intermediate state if we think about the um, old ELD classifications. And there's emergent use of academic vocabulary and other language features. Students at this level typically progress very quickly, learning to use English for their immediate needs, as well as beginning to understand and use academic vocabulary and other features. Of. So expanding is, if you think about early intermediate to the intermediate state. So students at this level um, have greater contextual use of English skills, they have greater variety of vocabulary and linguistic structures, and more sophisticated applications of the language that are appropriate to their age and grade level. So they're moving into a greater language proficiency here. And then bridging is where your early advanced and advanced students are, and this is where students um, continue to learn and apply a range of high-level English skills in a wide variety of contexts. Um, the bridge alludes to the transition into full engagement in grade level academic tasks and ac activities without need for specialized ELD instruction. Um, so these students may need feedback to help them to get to a full proficiency, but they may not need specialized ELD scaffold uh, in instruction. So each ELD proficiency level has a range or continuing continuum from entry to exit. The standards are organized by overall proficiency, so general descriptors at the entry, progress through, and exit levels from each ELD level, and then by modes of communication and knowledge of language in both the early and exit stages. And I'm going to put the ELD standards up on Beachboard as well. There are three modes of communication, uh, collaborative, interpretive, and productive. So collaborative is engagement in dialogue with others. Um, interpretive is the comprehension and analysis of written and spoken text. And productive is the creation of oral presentations and written text. Another way you can think about it is um, collaborative, being exchanging information and ideas, uh, interact, interacting via print and multimedia, um, persuasion, and uh, being able to think about language choices in various contexts. Interpretive, listening and asking questions um, or answering questions, reading closely and explaining, evaluating how other uh, writers or speakers use language, and then analyzing uh, choices in writing. Productive expression, right, of ideas in both oral presentations and in writing of both literary and informational text, supporting opinions and um, validating arguments, and then, so, I'm sorry, selecting and applying varied and precise vocabulary um, in these contexts. The ELD standards also include dimensions of knowledge and learning, including metalinguistic awareness, um, which is the extent of language awareness and self-monitoring, and accuracy of production. So when we talk about metalinguistic awareness, we're really actually talking about um, students being aware of the similarities and differences between their native language and English, um, the ways in which different kinds of language um, being aware of the ways in which different kinds of language are appropriate for different tasks, purposes, and audiences, and then being aware of how to intentionally and purposefully use um, vocabulary um, in English, right? Vocabulary, language structures, um, and uh, how to self-monitor in their use of language. Accuracy of production is kind of what I was talking about in relation to the first slide, how often one makes errors and whether these errors actually um, impede meaning and impede your ability to interact with others. 
So the California ELD standards are organized in three parts. Part one is what I was talking about earlier, uh, collaborative, interpretive, and productive, the ways of interaction. Part two has to do about learning how English structures work. So how are texts structured, um, understanding text structure and organization, and understanding cohesion and how language resources across a text contribute to wh the way a text unfolds and flows. So for example, understanding narrative structure and understanding that narrative structure may not be the same way that we write an expository essay, or that a lab report or a math proof may not be formatted in the same way as um, as an expository essay, even though they're all um, talking about information, right? The second part of part two is expanding and enriching ideas. So how uh, students are able to use verbs and verb phrases to create precision and clarity, nouns and noun phrases to expand ideas, um, and then adding uh, enriching details and information. And then finally conducting connecting and condensing ideas. So how students are able to use uh, clauses to connect ideas and then condense ideas within sentences using a variety of language resources. So when we think about um, language and the structure of language, that's really part two. And then part three, which is less applicable in a secondary setting, has to do with foundational le um, level literacy skills. And you can find foundational literacy skills both in the appendix that will be provided and also um, in the Common Core Standards, uh, especially in the K-5 through levels. Hopefully by the end of this part of lecture, you um, have been able to demonstrate a greater understanding of the 2012 revised ELD standard and the previous SALT levels and your implications for English language learners in your classroom. Um, we'll be working more closely with these standards as you're designing your assessments, as you're designing your lesson plans. We're really gonna be thinking about how we can support English learners and how we can um, scaffold our lesson plans to make sure that our English language learners are supported in our class. Rooms. So thanks so much. I look forward to seeing you in lecture. Thanks for hanging in there um, for these videos.